Hello and welcome to Florida State First Look Fall Sports. I'm your host Tom Block and over the next 30 minutes we'll get you set for all the fall sports seasons here at Florida State as we preview what's ahead for our soccer, volleyball and cross country teams. On the pitch we'll introduce you to several stars who proudly wear the garnet and gold but also proudly display the colors of their countries. They are national team players and they are elite and a big reason why Florida State's soccer program is elite on an annual basis. We'll hit the volleyball court and you'll meet a seminal senior who has improved her fitness and physique after an injury riddled junior campaign. Elise Walsh is back and better than ever and ready to lead the Seminoles back to the NCAA postseason. And speaking of leaders, you'd be hard pressed to find an individual who better fits the term student athlete than FSU's Colleen Quigley. She is a star cross country runner, an aspiring fashion model and a model student in the classroom. Her near picture perfect story is straight ahead. So stay tuned, Florida State First Look Fall Sports kicks into action right after this. After a miraculous Tiffany McCarty goal tied the game with less than one minute remaining in regulation, it looked as if the Florida State soccer team would find themselves in the NCAA championship game in 2012. But one minute 12 seconds into overtime, the Seminoles saw their dreams dash as Penn State scored the game winner, ending the Knowles season. Set in by Rogers, and Penn State wins it in overtime. And for the first time in history, the Nittany Lions will play for the national championship. When that final whistle blew, it was heartbreaking. And I think we are even more motivated now because we know we could have made it. All of summer, that's all I've been thinking about. So I'm really excited to get back and get the team going and hopefully having another trek to the final four. The Seminoles returned several key players from last year's College Cup squad. None more important than the triangle that protect the goal. Center backs Cassie Kalman and Kristen Grubka and goalkeeper Kelsey Weiss. The trio of upperclassmen will be called upon to anchor a defense while the Seminoles replace both outside backs. Well, it's going to be key for us. We, we know now that, uh, you know, last year we were hit hard with graduation, but uh, we also know that uh, the triangle that we have with Kelsey Weiss in the goal and Grubbs and, and Coleman uh, in the middle of the back will be as solid as any in the country. And I love playing with Cassie and I love playing with Grubka in the back. They, they alone give me a lot of confidence in myself. I know that they're going to go in, get stuck in any tackle. I know they're going to be good leaders. I know they're going to speak up when they need to be. And I know that they're just going to organize everything in front of them. And uh, me knowing that, it makes my job a lot easier at the end of the day. Florida State loses five starters from its 2012 squad, including all-time leading scorer Tiffany McCarty. While those spots open in the starting 11, expect a bevy of underclassmen and newcomers to find themselves in position to make a significant impact. Players like transfer Megan Campbell, redshirt freshman Berglund Thorvald's daughter, and true freshman Anna McClung are among other fresh faces that could play a huge role in the success of the 2013 season. We graduated a lot of good kids, but um, I think we have our fair share of talent here, and uh, some of these young kids are going to step forward and they're going to do just fine. We definitely lost talent, but a lot of the new freshmen and some transfers coming in are definitely going to bring that talent back to our team. and. It's just getting all on the same page, but I think we're going to do well with the players we have this year. The Garnet and Gold have never shied away from playing the best teams, and 2013 is no exception, with the Knolls playing eight teams ranked in the preseason top 25 in 2013. And if you thought the ACC couldn't get any tougher with defending national champion North Carolina leading the way, the league added perennial top 10 ranked Notre Dame to the mix, as well as Pittsburgh and Syracuse. And it's a tough schedule, but at the end of the day, I, I love playing in the ACC. I think it's one of the best things for our team, and we, are, we get challenged pretty much every single game. And from there, that exposes our weaknesses and as well builds our strength. Most schools who lose five starters from a College Cup team expect a step back the following year. However, Florida State is not most schools, and expectations have not changed one bit. 
I think we're all on the same page. We all want to go back to the final four because, especially because we experienced it last semester and we were unlucky, so we really want to make it this year. Always talking about we lose this person, we lose that person, but that's just no excuse, you know. Um, we're always going to lose people, we're always going to gain people, so we just have to maintain our focus and really work towards what we want to work towards in the national championship. It was a memorable summer for midfielder Dagny Brynjer's daughter. While most players spend their off-season playing in summer leagues, Brynjer's daughter was making history at the European Championships, scoring the game winner to send her native Iceland to the quarterfinals for the first time. It's a fine cross on a free header, and the first goal is Iceland's. Dagny Brynjer's daughter with a go-ahead goal for Iceland. And seeing Dag have the success she did, it was great. I got the chance to play. So I really wanted to like, try my best and it was amazing to score the goal. I can't really m remember what happened afterwards, but <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was amazing. Yet Brynjur's daughter is not the only Null who has found success at the international level. Last year, defender Cassie Kalman earned a gold medal while playing with the United States in the FIFA U20 World Cup. Winning the gold medal is pretty indescribable. Uh, it was an incredible feeling, one of the best feelings that I've been a part of. So um, it's a memory that I'll never be able to forget. And I really thank coming to FSU because they have definitely helped prepare me for that and prepare me for the national team. In fact, many current and former Seminoles have donned the jersey of their native country, something head coach Mark Krikorian finds important to his team's success. You know, I think it's uh, naive for us to not uh, embrace the opportunity to bring different cultures and different uh, styles of play and uh, different uh, types of, of, of kids together. You know, these international kids have brought such a positive uh, influence. I love the cultural diversity within the team because it's just, you know, soccer is different in every country basically and it, we just learn from each other. Recruiting players who play for their national teams sometimes means they will miss games during the season. A price Krikorian is more than willing to pay. Or maybe we can have a more global perspective and recognize that, you know, this is the world game and that, uh, you know, representing your, your national team is as great an honor as you can have in the game. He's been through it all, so he knows how to treat his players and how they will react to his words and stuff. So. I mean, loosening the reins a bit to let us go in and play in our way, I think will bring our flair out in the game as well as show him off as a great coach. Besides, nothing can match the feeling of putting on your country's colors. It's just really special. I mean, I can't really describe the feeling when you walk on the field and you hear the national anthem. It's just really special. I mean, it's always a great honor and you get like shivers and stuff when you, when you put on the jersey. When you're playing there in the national jersey, you can like feel how everyone in Iceland are supporting you and are really proud of you. I do it for my mom and for her country, but just playing for every single person in that country is just unbelievable. It's an absolute honor to play with a patch on your chest and when you're with the national team, they just talk about the people that have come before you and looking to the full national team. So it's awesome that you can be affiliated with such a successful soccer program. And come fall, they will all be united by the garnet and gold. There were many memorable moments for the Florida State Volleyball team in 2012. For the match, there it is. For the first time since 94, the Seminoles have beaten the Gators, and they swept them in three sets. Last year was a blast. It was so much fun the whole season. We really, we had a great season winning the ACC again, and that felt amazing. I just kind of working hard the whole year, and you know, finishing that ACC title off was just awesome. Yet despite earning back-to-back -back ACC championships, a few expectations went unmet. Schaller sets it up and they run the side, gets blocked, and it hits the antenna. Purdue will win 15 to 11. Purdue advances to the Sweet 16. We're a little disappointed at the very end. We played a great team that was able to, to beat us in five at the time in the NCAA tournament. 
I thought we did really well, ended a little shorter than we would have wanted, but uh, just feeds it for this year and we're looking to go further. Despite graduating four major pieces from the 2012 squad, the Seminoles still field an experienced team, led by reigning ACC Player of the Year, senior Ashley Neff. The experience doesn't end there, as three-year starters setter Sarah Wickstrom and libero Katie Mosher will help the Garnet and Gold navigate the ups and downs in 2013. Now those girls have a lot of confidence and a lot of experience from playing in those big matches and um, I expect them to really lead the team for every, during every point. Keeping calm on the court and just knowing what to expect because a lot of times when you have a lot of new players it makes it a little bit more difficult to come back together as a team when something goes wrong and we have girls that are coming back that played a lot last year so it's easier to stay calm on the court. Technically speaking, the Seminoles will have four newcomers in 2013, although both Sarah Burrington and Leah McKeskey redshirted last season. That year of watching and learning could prove critical for the Knolls during the season. They worked really hard all last fall, lifting when we weren't lifting, practicing all the time, you know, working really hard. You know, there's going to be times we may look down the court and see a lot of youth out there, but they're talented and I think if we can continue to work hard, they're going to improve as the season progresses. Head coach Chris Poole likes to challenge his team with the non-conference schedule, and with the Knolls taking on five teams ranked in the preseason top 25, this season is no different. Despite the challenge, the Seminoles relish the opportunity each and every year. Oh yeah, we love having the hard schedule. It gets you pumped up, ready to play. You can't slack off one day in practice because you know right around the corner you have a really, really strong team ahead of you. I think the preseason determines the rest of the season, so as long as we come out and execute those first few weekends, it should help us a lot during the whole season, especially at the end. The expectations in Tallahassee have changed dramatically under Coach Poole. Priority number one, protect the conference crown and earn the three-peat. You know, winning another ACC championship is definitely at the top of the list. And you know, being a player that I played in the Final Four um, with a couple of other girls on the team, getting back to that point and further is definitely an expectation. Get a three-peat on the ACC Championship would be awesome, and you know, we want to go farther than we, obviously we did last year, but we want to get back to the Final Four. Bikes. Weights. Sweat. That's what senior Elise Walsh's summer was all about. I was always kind of nervous like at first to tell them like I wanted to lose weight because it's always it's a touchy subject like someone's weight but they know like I've been struggling with it. The 2012 season's ending was just the beginning for Walt who wanted to make her senior year special. To do that she decided gaining an advantage meant losing some pounds. I was always told that I was good for my weight and you know that's something that I've been told not by like one coach not two but like a lot of coaches so that's something that's kind of motivated me like I just don't want to be good for my weight like I want just want to be great. Elise certainly made a made a commitment at the end of last season knowing she had one year left and I think sometimes that's a reality check for a lot of players when they have go into their senior year and just have that one season left to realize okay if I haven't accomplished everything I want to what do I need to do different. So Walsh began an ambitious routine of working out to get herself in the best shape of her life. In the beginning, I did a lot of elliptical and bike workouts and then doing extra cardio with Coach Quinn, and she was a really big part of this process. I think the toughest part about any person's individual goals is they've got to buy in and be really excited and disciplined with it. When I wanted to stop, she would always tell me to keep going. I remember like on the treadmill, like dying, I'm like, I can't do this, I can't do this, and she's like, I do not want to hear that word, like, you can do this. When the going got tough, the senior found strength from her teammates, who not only worked out with her, but helped her make good nutrition choices as well. They were all really supportive with that, and they would even like change their decisions based on what I was eating. So instead of french fries, they would get like fruit like with me, so that was nice. I worked with the nutritionist on staff, Kristen, so um, she really helped me with just making sure like my portions were correct. Us keeping each other accountable was really one of the main things. Like when we go out, we'd, oh, do we need a soda? We don't really need to drink soda. It wasn't really like just like her going on a diet. It was like a serious life change. So far, the results have been amazing. Walsh has lost 50 pounds, and everyone has taken notice during preseason camp. 
She's playing as well as I've ever seen her play and is very confident right now with the, with the newfound physical part that she now has. She's just as strong as she's ever been. She's so much quicker and jumping so much higher. She's been an inspiration for me and I think that's part of why her teammates really rallied around her too is because it, it's really exciting and inspiring to see what she's done. She has increased her vertical, she's jumping higher, she's moving faster. She, she was a very good player before but now she has just taken it to the next level. She's going to be unstoppable. But most importantly, Walsh could not be happier with the results. I never really believed in myself that I could do it, and honestly, I still can't believe that I did. You know, like I see pictures from like earlier this year and like last year when I was playing, and I'm really proud of myself because I never thought I could do it. The story all season long has been, is this the year that Karen Harvey and the Florida State Seminoles finally reach that national championship plateau? They have been the top team in the country all year long. They feel confident, they feel healthy coming in. Is this the year for the Seminoles? Finishing fourth at the NCAA championships was not a cause for celebration for the women's cross country team. It kind of was just a rerun of the year before, so that's, it's starting to get a little bit old for us uh, to be disappointed with nationals and come back with the fourth place. Even though fourth is, I mean, that's awesome, but not quite what we had hoped for. We finished with a disappointing team, overall effort, but our top three girls couldn't have run better. Now the 2013 season brings uncertainty as the Seminoles have to replace three of their main runners from 2012, making juniors Colleen Quigley and Lyndon Hall leaders of a pack of newbies. It's really exciting for them because it means they've really got an opportunity to step up and you know, go to nationals, whereas, you know, previous years if they would walked onto this team, you know, they could have been eighth or ninth runner and stayed at home. We're just trying to corral everyone and pretty much introduce everyone to college life and running at a collegiate level. For a team that has carried lofty expectations during the last several years, this season's goals are more of a work in progress. I guess they're still a little bit open-ended because we really don't know where everyone's going to be at. You know, again, having so many new people, so we'll get more of a feel of that after our first few races. I'm focused on teaching these girls about choices and about putting their nose down and realizing you are an underdog. Don't come in here with a chip on your shoulder. Yes, we're Florida State, but you better earn it. Now let the sweat begin, right? Good job, guys. For the Seminole men, the NCAA meet was a dream come true, with all runners hitting their stride en route to a fifth place finish. Got out there, got in the mix, didn't back off, hung on for dear life and finished fifth. And so that was one of those really great moments in, in the sport where you overachieved, not by a little bit, but quite a bit. We showed we're a, we've got a great cross country program and we can always be up there. And to me, it, it made me proud to, to be at this school and you know, part of a great team. You want two, three, no! Now the Knolls look to build off their success with a new look roster that includes 14 new runners. The younger guys, you know, they're still a really great athletes. Uh, maybe they haven't raced in Florida State singlet, but regardless of that, we still have a people who race that, you know, at national level competitions and they are really high up, probably uh, in the same level at NCAA. So I can offer these guys a lot of guidance and, I mean, my experience, I feel although it's a year, I learned a lot and I feel I am capable of helping these guys out. I look forward to it. With such an inexperienced team, Florida State is focused on one thing to start the season, making sure the Seminoles' NCAA streak and team tradition stays intact. The number one thing for us is continue our streak. We've got a 10-year NCAA national qualifying streak. It's only shared by six other schools throughout the country over you know, the last 10 years. That's a pretty, pretty strong thing that, that says tradition. After a successful freshman season that saw her earn All-American honors on the track, Colleen Quigley was worried about what she would do for an encore. Coming in last year, I just wanted to improve on the year before, improve on freshman year. I was kind of coming in scared of the sophomore slump. I was like, freshman year went really well for me. I was really happy for it, about it. What if I go backwards sophomore year? As far as talent, she is loaded. I, I knew it when I saw her in high school. Colleen Quigley. Those worries disappeared quickly as she was one of seven women to earn All-American honors in cross country and indoor and outdoor track and field. 
I was really happy that I was able to continue um, improving last year and gain three more All-American statuses. So, yeah, just looking to improve again this year. Quigley's achievements would be impressive enough on their own, except there's more. She also stars in The Classroom, where she is a six-time All-ACC Academic Honoree. Not the easiest of tasks at the collegiate level. Definitely a lot of organization because, you know, as distance runners, we've got a lot of practice. You know, we're running in the morning before school. You know, you can't afford to leave things to the last minute. Just got to make sure you're on good terms with all your teachers and, you know, they're willing to work with you. Yet all of those accomplishments almost didn't happen because Quigley had the opportunity to do some modeling in high school giving her the choice between a career in modeling or a college athletics scholarship. Keeping my options open is how I came to Florida State because I kind of had it in my head that I was going to go live in New York and be a model after high school. I ended up keeping my options open and Coach Harvey gave me a great opportunity to come here and so I changed my mind at the last minute. She could have chosen that, that career path. That was set for her to go ahead and make a ton of money, be comfortable in a lifestyle of being a model, and she chose to come here over that. You know, this is really special. I know she's not looking back, because things are going really well for her. And now as she begins her junior campaign, Quigley no longer worries about one-upping herself. Although, no one doubts she can. Thanks so much for joining us for this special edition of Florida State First Look Fall Sports. I hope you've enjoyed the opportunity to meet some of the emerging stars here at Florida State, as well as to learn more about the soccer, volleyball, and cross country programs, which always excel. Remember to follow those programs in all Seminole sports at any time. Log on to Seminole.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time from right here at Florida State.